Hi, friends. <sighs> I, um... I've had some things coming through. Partly arising out of some conversations that I've had recently. And partly um, my own reflections. And one, something that I've been uh, becoming conscious of, again, this is something I believe I've even talked about it on this post a while back, um, is the issue of power and how we either claim or don't claim our power and how we either wield or don't wield our power and, and power as such. And it's really, it's a really interesting one, especially kind of in the context of <clears throat> what I've spoken about now for a couple of weeks, the sense of, of wrestling with my own sense of purpose and my own um, kind of orientation. And because power is so much the kind of core energy that shapes our lives, whether we are wielding it, whether it is wielded over us, and especially, you know, those of us, any of us with, I mean, anybody essentially who has um, any kind of stuff any kind of patterning or programming that they've had to unravel from their childhood, it, it's almost impossible to, to, to find someone who hasn't had a powerful imprinting experience having to do with power, being dominated, being, you know, being dominant, being, you know, empowered, or being disempowered, what kind, you know, the associations we have with what empowers us and what disempowers us. These are kind of like the core questions of how we, how we orient our lives. And, and, and when I look at my own conundrum, um, which I believe I'm making progress on, but when I look at it, I begin to see that my relationship to my own power is really at the heart of it. And specifically, you know, there was, there was some, uh, I had a great conversation with Katie. I forget how many months ago she'd been listening to a podcast about power and leadership and they basically broke down power into three or four categories. Power over, power with, in other words, power that's shared. Power to, the empowerment to do things, not necessarily in relation to other people, but circumstances. And then uh, there may have been another one that I'm that I'm forgetting right now, but the but the key one, the big one, that's kind of come back to me recently is power over. Because power over is the one most of us have experienced power over from the underside. And 
depending on how that goes as a young person or in whatever life experiences have have kind of deeply impressed upon us what it means to be under the authority of someone else that can really heavily shape our own willingness to exert power over and the thing is all of these all of these forms of power can have healthy and unhealthy manifestations not no no form of power is inherently good or bad um because each of them can 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 be used effectively can be used for for good or for ill um each of them can be kind of craved as a as a as a as a way that we that we prefer to to feel power or wield power and each of them can be avoided as a kind of threatening or um, unpleasant uh, relationship to power so all of them have that uh, all of them can be anything in it as far as our our orientation to them goes but i do think that power over has a kind of um, it has a particularly important character because of its role in imprinting us at a young age and because it's a form of power that as we grow into maturity and we relate to peers and collaborators, friend, I mean, friend, you know, usually this is, usually these are dynamics. I mean, these are dynamics that play out in all personal relationships as well, a little more subtly. Um, but in work relationships or in professional, you know, colleague type relationships, they're particularly uh, visible and particularly kind of prominent. You can name them. You know, if someone is the boss, they have power over that's that's how it works that's how that's how companies are structured so the so the but that doesn't mean that the boss has to wield only power over and what i'm detecting in myself is um a kind of sensitivity around that and and almost like a a, a discomfort with power over because, and, and there's, it's kind of like, you know, the, on the one hand, there's this side of me that has loved collaboration and sharing creative relationships, professional relationships, musical, you know, music, a, a, a band or a, an orchestra is a, giant manifestation of power with of course sometimes you have a conductor but but they but i but i have i would say that in my life i i still struggle with embracing power over in a kind of wholehearted and and wholesome way um even this play even in parenting this can be a thing this is, you know, I, there, there, there are entire books written about how parents don't want to wield power over. They, we, we want to be, we want to be peers with our children when there's no, when that's not functional. <laughs> and it's, and it, and you know, from, from the, from what I have read, from the books that have come into my sort of field of awareness, <laughs> they don't recommend that approach. They don't recommend that you share equal power with your toddler. Because they say, essentially the, the, the sort of description is one of you will be a tyrant. So decide who. <laughs> decide who's going to be the tyrant. <clears throat> very kind of like, it's kind of funny to think about, but it's also very um, significant in a way. And it, and it speaks to our general cultural aversion to power over. 
Um, now, the other thing about power over that is showing up for me recently and, and, and something that I, that I have, it's, it's impressing itself upon me and my awareness is that power over is also responsibility. It's also saying, it, it, again, it doesn't mean like power over doesn't mean I dominate you because I can or because it's my role. It means I exert power because I am, have been imbued with the responsibility for whatever it is and avoiding that that sort of my aversion to power to, to wielding power over is also an aversion ultimately kind of subconsciously it's an aversion to standing firm in that responsibility and saying yes i actually am responsible here you know sharing power is a way of sharing responsibility for the outcome in a way that may be totally appropriate and may be totally healthy and can also be a form of avoidance, you know, or ducking, ducking that sense of, well, I don't want to, I don't want it all on my shoulders. You know, I don't, it's hard to stand up and take full, um, full responsibility for a, for something that's a, that might be a big, a very big deal. So, Anyway, this is playing out in me a little bit, and, and, I, and I'm looking at it um, because I think it is at play in the, in the way that my identity is undergoing a kind of shift right now, or my coach called it a crossroads. I think I've, I've seen myself rise and really begin to embrace my own power, and then very quickly either become unsure that I have what it takes in that mo in, in, in the, on the kind of responsibility side of the coin, or for whatever reason, become uncomfortable wielding my power. And so I duck into relationships where I'm, or, or circumstances where I am either sharing power or subordinate. And it gives me clarity. I can, now I can just do this project. I don't have to be the boss. I can just do this. And it, and that pattern is 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 undermining my long term growth. It's undermining my, it's undermining my um, my full movement into owning my own life, owning my own professional life. So that's something that is showing up for me. I'm. Uh, I'm on the case. Man, it feels like being a detective sometimes. A detective, it's like you 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 hired a hired you hired a private eye to 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 monitor myself. <laughs> and I'm also the private eye. I don't know if that was clear from the image I was making. It's kind of an unclear image. Anyway. I'll leave it there for today, but thank you for watching. I appreciate you. So much love. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.